Hello everyone, welcome back for another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a new tool that I have received recently. It's called a drill press vise and it, it does exactly what it sounds like. It's a drill press vise. It holds things together or holds them still for me as I put them through a drill. Really quick, I'm going to demonstrate how to use this. Um, starting off with a little scrap copper blank that I have that I've been kind of playing around with some different textures and things with. So I thought it would be a good project piece. What I'm going to do first is I want to put a divot into my metal. The reason for that is so that when I bring my drill press, or my, my drill bit rather, and I bring that drill bit into that hole, it helps to guide my drill bit and doesn't allow it to skitter off or scratch the surface of my metal. I'm just using a very simple center punch that I bought at one of the big box hardware stores. You can buy these uh, for probably about two to five dollars. They're not bad. What I'm going to do is just place it wherever I wanted to drill my hole and I'm just going to give a quick little tap. Maybe I want to do a couple of these, just however many you want. This is something that I do anytime I'm going to be doing any piercing work. Uh, another thing that I keep in mind typically too is that you don't always have a flat surface and you don't always have a flat piece that you are going to be working with. If I'm going to be working with some of my domed pieces like the, the pieces that I do with my hydraulic press, I will put them onto a dap and then I will knock my divot into them that way. Okay, so like I said, this is going to allow me to hold my metal piece so that I can then go ahead and drill my holes into it. The reason I really like having a tool like this versus the way that I have been doing it is because my hands then are free of the metal. In this way, if the drill bit happens to catch my metal, what will happen is that drill bit can catch it and spin your piece and that hurts if it catches your fingers because you can very easily cause some very dangerous cuts and uh, injury that way. So it's kind of nice to have a tool like this where you can go ahead and secure your piece and free up your fingers and that way if the drill press does or the drill bit does catch then it's not going to be harming you. Rather your piece but I'd rather have my piece harmed than myself. Uh, the way to work this, there's a couple of different things that you can do. This has uh, kind of a coil spring cut type of a, a thing here where you can twist. And by twisting, you can open or close the jaws on this. Another thing that is here is kind of like a little bypass button. I can push the button and then I can move the jaws open and close. So it's a nice because then I have an easier way of opening it or closing it rather quickly. So uh, another thing that you'll notice in here on the jaws, on the back side of the jaw, the movable part, it does have a groove that can help you to kind of secure pieces that way. There is not a corresponding groove, however, on the front. So it's held just more by pressure. If you find that you have a smaller piece, some things that you can do to kind of make sure that everything is securely held, you can line these jaws with uh, some kind of like a felt or uh, maybe some leather, just kind of give you a little bit more friction and grip there. But what I'm going to do for this particular piece, I'm just going to hold it into place and I'm going to secure it just by tension. Okay, so I just put it in here, bring this in, twist it until it's tight. Now if my metal is annealed, I have to be very careful because by squishing this, it will go ahead and compress and deform my piece and that may not be the desired result. So just pay attention to what you're doing. Now I do have some movement here and I just moved it right out of its little spot so I'll go ahead and secure that again. But here you can see I definitely have some good pressure held on to that. So from now, now that I've got it secured in here, I'm going to put this into my drill press and what I do now is I'm going to line up my drill bit with the little divot holes that I have created. And that's going to allow me to guide my drill bit into the proper place. Before I ever turn my drill press on, what I do is I come in and I'll do a test fit to make certain that everything is lined up where it needs to be. And um, just make sure that nothing is going to be moving on me. So take a second to get everything lined up the way it needs to. All right. 
Now this one, because of where my hole is, I am actually going to kind of hold this with my fingers as well, just to kind of stabilize it so it's not tilting up or down as I bring my drill press down into it. If it tilts up or down, then my hole is not gonna go straight down, it will actually go in at an angle. Another thing that I do before I ever drill anything is I lubricate my bit. Now this can be done with any number of materials. You've got beeswax, there's different things like burlife or cut lube. There's also liquid uh, lubricants that you can use, something like tap magic or even machine oil. And what I do is I'll just turn on my drill bit a little bit and it helps if I have some power. But I'll turn on my drill bit and then I will just hold it very close and gently touch my burlife to my bit. Okay, so now we have some power. This will help. So like I said, I'm just going to turn it on, very light speed, and gently touch my burr life to my bit, and then I'll turn that off. And again, in this case I had to move things, so I'll go ahead and make sure everything is lined up again. Okay, and now I'm ready to go ahead and turn this on and bring this down and drill my hole. Now, I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to make my or force my drill bit to go through the metal. I want the drill bit to do the work for me. So I'm going to bring it through slow and make sure that the bit does the work for me. Now one of the things that you may or may not have seen as I was doing this, we now have, let's see if I can bring this in here so we can focus. You can see right here we've got the metal shavings where the metal was actually cut away and my hole is right here. So you can kind of see that I did not force my bit through too quickly. If you do, what happens is you end up with all these little chips and what that's doing is your drill bit is trying to cut too much material at once. If you get these nice long stringers, then you're actually getting the most efficient use out of your drill bit. Once you get the hang of your drill bit or your drill, either you've got a flex shaft or maybe a drill press or Dremel, whatever, it's easy to now kind of go through and make a good little uh, progression between your drill holes. So I just come in and it's easy for me just to move things around. And I go from one to the next to the next quite easily. And you can see how this might make easy work of things. And it also, like I said, keeps my fingers free of the drill bit. It also keeps them more secure because I don't have to worry about the drill bit catching my metal and spinning it. So where can you get these? Well, you can buy them through me. I currently have several on hand and they are available in my shop at kcjewelbox.com.